Praise you, Jesus. Are you blessed, church? Amen. Amen. Are we all blessed? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Amen. Our God is stronger. Amen, church. And uh, because like what we've said earlier, that uh, God is greater, God is stronger. That means knowing that He is greater and He is stronger. Whatever our situation and circumstances are, we are here to honor the Lord. Amen po. Hallelujah. Can I invite each and every one of us to stand up? And uh, let us open our, our Bible in Matthew chapter 16, verses uh, 21 to 23. This is the time when Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples, predicting his death. Yeah, and the word of the Lord says that from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, of the chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. And on the third day, be raised back to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Let's praise the Lord for the reading of his words. Let us pray. Yes, Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for that knowledge that you are greater, Father God. That you are stronger, Lord. You are greater and stronger than anything that is in this world. You are greater and stronger than anything that we are facing, Father God, in our day to day. And because you are greater and stronger. Lord, there is a calling. You teach us to trust in you, Father God. And Lord, thank you that as we listen to your words this afternoon, Father, may these words, Father God, will not only gonna be a likable word, will not only gonna be a word that we can uh, uh, hear, that we can uh, welcome, but most importantly, let these words, Father, minister to us and through us that uh, it may yield, Father God, a crop. It may yield fruits, Father God. Fruits that can change and transform us to be the person, to be the man and a woman that you desire us to be. So, Father God, we continue to entrust and surrender everything unto you. Father God, your servant, continuously humble himself in your lordship. Hide me behind you, Father God. Cover me with your most precious blood, O Lord. I know I am not worthy to stand here in the front and stand in the face, the front of your people, Father God. But thank you very much because I do not stand here to represent myself, Father God. And Lord, Teach me and humble me to be the mouthpiece, Father God, that you need me to be this afternoon. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? if you read the whole passage, Jesus was in a place called Caesarea Philippi. And this is the same place 
where he asked the disciples who the Son of Man is. Who do people say the Son of Man is? This is the same place where um, Peter told Jesus that you are the Son of God. Amen? And this is the same place that Jesus, or it's not only the same place, it's the same time. It's the same time that Jesus as well released that blessing to Peter that he says that Peter... On your testimony in this rock, I will build my church. It is in that same place. It is in that same time, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? And as Jesus continues um, uh, his conversation, as Jesus continues in his teaching to the disciples during that time, and like what we've said, Jesus predicts his death. Amen? Jesus, do we believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that our Lord Jesus Christ, although fully man during that time, but He is also fully God? Amen, church? He is all-knowing. Amen? The characteristic of being omniscient of God is also on Jesus Christ during that time. Amen. As a matter of fact, isn't it in John chapter 4, with that uh, adulterous woman in the well, Jesus told him, Jesus told the woman, the woman's story, the woman's life, without knowing that woman. Amen. How many times that we were talking last time about the same people, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, where they are asking Jesus Christ, asking for a sign. And we know that Jesus knew their very purpose. We knew, my dear brothers and sisters, the very purpose of these people in asking. Amen. Amen. And always their purpose, according to the Bible, according to Jesus, is He knew that they are there, the questions are there to trap Jesus. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ is talking to the disciples, He knew exactly what is going to happen. Amen. Amen. Jesus knew exactly what is going to happen. Jesus knew exactly what is, is in his future. It is not a surprise to him. Amen, church. Jesus knew about John 3.16 that because God so loved the world, that is the reason why that Jesus came. Amen? To die for all of us. Jesus knew about that. Jesus knew that he would be betrayed. Amen? Jesus knew who would betray him. Jesus knew, my dear brothers and sisters, that he will suffer inhumane death. That he will be crucified. Jesus knew, my dear brothers and sisters, that he will be dead for three days and three nights. We were talking about that last week when the Pharisees are asking Jesus for a sign. And what did Jesus said, my dear brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40? You are asking for a sign. And Jesus said that the only sign that I can give you is just like as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the big fish, the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Meaning, He will be three days and three nights buried in the earth. Amen, church? Jesus knew all of that. 
Alam ng Panginoong Heso Kristo lahat ng bagay na yan, my dear brothers and sisters. Nothing is hidden from Him. Amen? But most importantly, He knows that in the, three, in the third day, He will raise again. Amen, church? Hallelujah! Hallelujah that Jesus Christ rose on the third day. Amen, church? Jesus knew all of that. Alam ng Panginoong Heso Kristo lahat yon. Nothing is hidden from Him. That is the reason why one day in Caesarea Philippi, in verse 21, that we just read, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, from that time on, Jesus said, Amen. It says in there, from the time on. Amen. Magmula sa araw na yan, magmula sa oras na yan, Jesus taught them. Jesus told them what is going to happen. Amen, church? In verse 21, sabi niya rito, from then on, Jesus began to tell His disciples. Plainly, sabi niya doon, it's no longer parable. But He began to tell them plainly. Plainly meaning, my dear brothers and sisters, something that can easily be understood by them. Plainly, my dear brothers and sisters, meaning it is li less likely to be misinterpreted. Amen po. He began to tell them, sinabi niya sa kanilang lahat, kung ano ang mga mangyayari. Amen. He began to plainly tell them that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem. Kailangan. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Hindi maiiwasan. He, it is necessary for him to go to Jerusalem. It is necessary for him to suffer many terrible things. Amen, church. It is necessary for him to be killed. But like what we have said, but on the third day, he will rose again. On the third day, he will come back from the dead. Amen, church. This is what Jesus was trying to tell the disciples. That it is a must. It is necessary. Jesus was telling them, referring back, you know, when we are talking about John 3.16, that for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. But Jesus is telling them that in order for that, to have that power, in order for that to accomplish the purpose, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is telling them, I must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer inhumanely. I must die. Amen, church. But on the third day, I will raise again. Amen. But in verse 22, what happened? Peter could not believe what Jesus was saying. Amen, church. Peter could not believe what Jesus is saying. And in Peter's mind, in Peter's mind, it simply could not happen. Amen, church. Just imagine. Your dad came to you and he told you, I must go away. I must go abroad. We may be separated to provide for the family. Who among you say, yippee? No. Dad, do you really have to go? Dad, we are coping in here. Dad, we are better off together. Amen, church? Amen? Just like Peter, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ was saying, it is a must for me to go to Jerusalem, it is a must for me to suffer, it is a must for me to die. 
But don't worry because on the third day, I will come back again. But no, Peter said, my dear brothers and sisters, in his mind, Jesus, this simply could not happen. Hindi pwedeng mangyari ito, he said. Amen, church. He did not only told Jesus that this could not happen. He even pulled Jesus in the side and began rebuking Jesus. He pulled Jesus in the side and began reprimanding Jesus. But it says in here, God forbid, it will not happen to you. This will never be happened to you. Amen, church. You know, if you are one of the disciples, you probably say amen in agreement. Oh, yes, yes. Amen, church. Because Peter has the good, has the best intention. Diba? Amen, church. Maybe naunahan lang niya si Simon, naunahan lang niya si Andrew. Maybe naunahan lang niya si James. I mean, even if we are there, we probably will say that, Lord, it will not happen. Lord, hindi kailangang mangyari. Lord, it doesn't need to happen to you. Amen, church? Because it is a natural human reaction. Amen, church? Amen? To be honest, it is a commendable reaction. Amen? It is a commendable reaction. Amen, church? If we remind ourselves, Peter. If we remind ourselves, who is Peter? Diba? Peter among all the disciples of the Lord. There were 12 who were chosen to be the closest apostle of the Lord. And Peter, my dear brothers and sisters, if we remember Peter, Peter is quite impulsive. Amen. What does impulsive mean? Impulsive is whatever the impulse is that time, Yun kagad yung kanyang reaction. Amen, church? Amen? Just like if someone hit you in the toes and it's painful, aray! Amen, church? Peter is quite impulsive. Peter is quite emotional. Peter does things. Peter say things without for us asking without first knowing the reason. Amen, church? As a good example, this situation where Jesus said, it is must for me to go to Jerusalem, that I, may, that I need to die, that I need to perish, and, but in the third day, I will back, come back again. And Peter was quick to say, he did not ask Jesus. Peter just quick to say no. And begin rebuking Jesus. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, another example is in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28. When it was dark and they saw Jesus walking above the waters and all of them were got scared. But when they realized that it was Jesus, it was Peter who quickly say, Lord, if it's you, I want to walk as well. Without thinking, what are the necessary repercussions in order for you to walk above waters? Amen, church. The lesson in there is, yes, I think all of us want to walk above waters. But we are not ready to stay focused. Amen, church. Just like Peter. He wanted to walk above the waters, but he was not ready to stay focused. Amen, church. It is the same disciple, it is the same Peter, my dear brothers and sisters, in John chapter 13, verse 8 and 9, when Jesus Christ was, before uh, Jesus Christ will die, on that uh, one evening, on that uh, last supper, that Jesus bought, brought a basin of water and wanted to wash the feet of the disciples. Amen. You familiar with that story? That Jesus wants to wash the feet of the disciples. 
And Peter said, no, no, no. Why will you wash my feet? And then Jesus said that, without me washing your feet, you do not have a part of me. And all of a sudden, Pumambio, another jeer, Oh Lord Jesus, then do not just wash my feet, wash my head as well. It was the same Peter in John chapter, in the same passage, John chapter 13, 37, when Jesus Christ said, I am going to a place that none of you can follow. But still Peter insisted that, Lord, I am going to follow you. I can even give my life in following you. But what did Jesus said? You do not know what you're saying because before the rooster will um uh, ano na yon? Um tumilaok. <laughs> That's tumilaok in English. <laughs> Yeah, before the crow say, Kukurok, <laughs> you will deny me three times. Diba? Nakikita natin. And my dear brothers and sisters, it is very commendable about Peter. But you know, the reality is, yung katotohanan is, are we not all like Peter? Di po ba? Amen. Are we not all like Peter? Not only sometimes, but most of the time we are also like Peter. Amen. Because Peter is a perfect example, is a very good example of being a human. Amen, church. Yes, they are disciples, but they are also human. And as a human, my dear brothers and sisters, we are composed of Trinity as well. Yes, we have the Spirit, but let us not forget, we are also composed of our soul, emotion. We are also composed of our body, physical, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So in a sense, my dear brothers and sisters, Peter represent us all. Amen. Peter is like us also. Amen, church. Peter has the courage to say probably many of us would do. Sabi ko nga, I said, if we are in that situation, maybe we will do the same. Amen, church. Maybe we will do the same. Peter is very vocal. And in reality, represents us all. That happens to us, my dear brothers and sisters. If things go in the wrong way, if things go in the way that we do not expect, if things, my dear brothers and sisters, if our prayers are not answered, it's the same. Why do we, what do we say? Why, Lord? few days ago, we commemorate, we had a memorial on the life of our dearly beloved sister, Sister Alice. And when we heard the news, if not all of us, many of us had that question, why Lord? Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters? Why Lord, bakit siya pa? And not only Sister Alice, every time that we lost a loved ones, why Lord? Every time that we receive a diagnosis, every time that a family member, people dear to us, close to us, receive a diagnosis, there is that question of, why, Lord? Amen. When Jesus Christ told Peter and the disciples that I must go to Jerusalem, that I will suffer, that I will die, Peter represented the whole group in saying that, Why, Lord? It must not be, Lord. Why, Lord, why? 
And it happens to us as well. Diba? Nangyayari po sa atin yan. That's why the title of our message today is Trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Pagtitiwala. Magtiwala po tayo sa Panginoon. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, we can only see what is happening in the now. Amen. We can only see what is happening in the now. Our plan is limited. But the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is looking at the greater purpose. The Lord is looking at His eternal plans and purpose. Amen, church. For us, human, we can only see what will benefit us in the moment. We can only see what is happening in the moment, but Jesus or the Lord, He is looking at the bigger pictures. Amen, church. And He knows what He is doing. Amen. How many of us in here believe that the Lord knows what He is doing? Amen. Kaya, my challenge to each and every one of us is, Whatever our situation at the moment, whatever is our circumstances at the moment, spirit, body, and soul, the people that we represent, the loved one that was diagnosed, the loved one that is suffering, people dear to us who pass away, my dear brothers and sisters, my encouragement, or the encouragement of the Lord for us this afternoon is the Lord knows what He is doing. Amen. The Lord knows what He is doing and we must trust in Him. Amen, church. Fa Proverbs 3.5 Very famous memory verse natin ito. Trust in the Lord, it says in there. Amen. Amen. Let us trust in the Lord. Nagtra-trust, we trust in the Lord. But what I, the passage in here is asking is, trust in the Lord with all our heart. Because sometimes, yes, we trust in the Lord, but sometimes not wholeheartedly. Amen, church. Let us trust in the Lord with all our heart. And let us not rely or let us not lean on our own understanding. Amen, church. So the challenge in here, the encouragement in here is trust in the Lord when everything is happening well for you. Trust in the Lord when things are going to the direction that you are hoping Trust in the Lord when your prayers are being answered. Amen, church? But most importantly, trust in the Lord if things are not going your way. Most importantly, trust in the Lord when your prayers are not answered. Most importantly, trust in the Lord when you are in that center of misery, of struggle, of trials. Amen, church. Psalms 112, verse 7, it says in here, they will have no fear of bad news. They will have no fear of bad news. They will have no fear, my dear brothers and sisters, of bad situation. Their hearts are steadfast. Their hearts are firm. And who are these people? Who are the people who have no fear of bad news? Who are these people who have no fear of bad situation? 
Who are these people who their hearts are steadfast? Who are these people who are their hearts are firm? It is you, my dear brothers and sisters, who put their trust in the Lord. Amen, church? That is the benefit of trusting in the Lord. Because you trust in the Lord, you relinquish, my dear brothers and sisters, to the Lord. So meaning, whatever news that will come, albeit a good one or a bad one, whatever situation that will come, a good one or a bad one, my dear brothers and sisters, you are not gonna fear. You are not gonna fear because you relinquish that to the Lord. Amen, church. Because you put your trust in the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. If we are in a bad situation, if we are in a bad news, like what we've said, it is in this moment that we need to trust more the Lord. It is in this moment that we trust the Lord with all our heart. Amen, church. During bad circumstances, during bad calamity, it is this moment that we cast ourselves in the feet of the Lord and trust in Him and call to Him and cry to Him. Amen, church. Hallelujah. It is this moment that we cry to the Lord and say that, Lord, I admit that I don't understand, that I don't know why. Isn't it? Instead of asking, why, Lord? Why you allow it to happen? This is the moment that we come to the Lord and say that, Lord, I admit that I do not understand. I admit that I do not know why are these things happening. But Father, thank you because I can trust in you. Amen. That is where that says that in good times or in bad times, paborito ni Sister Alma na passage yan. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. And in between that rising of the sun and the going down of the sun, my dear brothers and sisters, in between that, things can happen. Things can happen, my dear brothers and sisters. But whatever it is that happens in that situation, in that time, trust in the Lord. Amen, church. Lord, I do not understand why is this happening? I do not know why is this happening. I don't know the reason. But Father God, I thank you because you are in control. Amen. Amen. Lord, I don't know why you allow me to be diagnosed of this condition. Lord, I do not know why you have allowed me to be afflicted with this disease. Or my family, my loved ones. But Lord, I thank you. Because I know that you are in control. Amen, church. Psalms 46.1. Again, another memory verse, another favorite scriptures. God is our refuge and strength a very present help during the times of troubles amen church that's the reason why of coming to the lord because we know that we are incapable but in the lord he can act as our refuge and strength 
He is our very present help in trouble. Amen, church. Anyone in here who enjoys troubles, trials, suffering? Anyone? I don't think that anyone enjoys suffering, trials, troubles. I don't think that anyone enjoys problem. Yes, John 14, 6 says that in this world there will be trials and tribulations, but take heed, I have overcome the world. But even knowing, having that understanding, I don't think that any of us enjoy troubles, trials, suffering, and testing. Amen, church. None of us like to have trials and tribulations. We don't want to live in the middle of trials and tribulations. Amen, church. But my dear brothers and sisters, when we are in the middle of trials and tribulations, it says in there, God is our refuge and strength. Amen, church. A very present help. Amen. So when we are in the middle of trials and tribulations, God give us strength. Amen, church. Amen. It is common. No one is immune about going through trials and tribulations. That's what Jesus said. That's the reason why we have to overcome all this through Christ and with Christ. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. The warning, the warning, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord does not want to happen. That's the reason why the encouragement of the Lord always is to trust in Him. Because without that encouragement of trusting in Him, what the Lord do not want to happen is, and it happened to, we can see it outside, it happened to many people. If they encounter problem, if they encounter trials and tribulations, they lose the will to live. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the reason why there is that ongoing battle of uh, legalizing mercy killing, euthanasia. Because people lost the will to live. Amen, church. But if you are a believer as well, with these trials and tribulations sometimes, it affects our faith as well. We lose our faith. Amen, church. Pay attention, my dear brothers and sisters. I want to encourage us with this. That lahat po tayo, all of us here, have faith. Amen, church. However small, however big that faith is, it's good enough. It's faith, my dear brothers and sisters. And I want na itanim natin sa ating puso at isipan. I want, this, I want us to implant this in our mind and in our heart, my dear brothers and sisters. Pay attention. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. My dear brothers and sisters, a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Amen. Ang pananampalataya na hindi sinusubok pa nga kapatid ay pananampalataya na hindi pinagkakatiwalaan. Amen, church. So if you are going through trials, if you are going through moment in life, rejoice. Rejoice. Amen, Amen church. Amen. There is a man. His name is Job. Do you know him? You seen him passing by this morning? There is a man, his name is Job. And we know that Job suffered. Job has been tested. Amen, church. If you don't know the life of Job, read it. 
You go to your Old Testament and find Job. And I want you to read even the first few chapters. And Job was tested. You know the reason being, my dear brothers and sisters, you know why Job is tested? The Lord allowed it. Amen. The Lord allowed the faith of Job to be tested. Nothing in this world, the Lord is in control. Nothing in this world will happen without the Lord allowing it to happen. But it is not a surprise that whatever the Lord allowed to happen, the Lord has a greater purpose. Amen, church. Do we believe in that? The Lord allowed the faith of Job to be tested. Because why? What did Job told the Satan when Satan said that he wants to test Job? The Lord allowed the faith of Job to be tested because he trusts in the faith of Job. Amen, church? Yeah. The Lord trusted in the faith of Job. That's why he allowed the faith of Job to be tested. And that's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters here, people online, kung dumadaan tayo sa pagsubok, if we are going through trials and tribulations, my dear brothers and sisters, you rejoice. Even that's what the Bible said. Rejoice in all the trials and testings that you are to go through. Amen, church? Because these trials and testing has a purpose. These trials and testing, my dear brothers and six sisters, exercise your faith. It build up perseverance. Amen, church? Amen. And it says in there, when perseverance mature, you will be complete. Lacking nothing. That's the reason why. Sabihin mo sa iyong katabi, kung dumadaan ka sa pagsubok, praise the Lord, because the Lord trusts your faith. Amen, church? A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Just as the Lord trusted on the faith of Job that he allowed Job to be tested, the same reason, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord look at you in the same way that he look at Job. So glory to God in the highest. Lord, I do not understand why. I do not know the reason why why you are allowing these things to happen come in my life. But thank you, Lord, because I know that you are in control. I thank you, Lord, because I know that when I am weak, you are my strength. I thank you, Lord, because if I cannot stand up and walk, you can pick me up, hold me in your arms and walk, that's what the footprints in the sun teaches us. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. The fact that you are going through trials, the fact that we are going through what we are going through, the fact that you have gone through what you have gone through, God trust your faith. He do not only trust your faith, but he wants to promote and grow your faith as well. Amen, church. So just like Job, don't give up. Amen. That is always the message. That is always the remedy in tribulation and trials. It says in there, perseverance. Magpatuloy ka lamang, my dear brothers and sisters. Magpatuloy ka lamang. Just persevere. Amen. 
1 Corinthians 10.13, sabi niya rito, all the trials that we are going through are common. Amen, church? The trials that we are going through is not unique. It's common. Pinagdadaanan din yan ng mga ibang tao. Amen, church? But the most importantly here, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Lord who trusted in your faith is faithful. That He will not allow you to be tried. He will not allow you to be tempted. He will not allow you to suffer more than you can bear. Amen, church? He will not allow you to bear more than anything that you can carry. No? Thank you for the life of Trevor in his family. I'm sure on that during that instant moment where everything is coming into places, we probably don't see the end of the line. We probably don't see what is happening. We probably don't know what to do. But now, knowing now, diba? if you look at them, those mountainous trail, it seems nothing. Amen, church. I was talking to Mike earlier. Because I am very keen. I was fond of his son, yung anak niya, yung kaibigan ni Carl. Amen, church. Nakita, nakita na natin. We met yung anak ni Mike ilang beses, di ba? He came and joined us as well in our worship few times. I was so blessed dahil nakapasok siya sa Oxford University. Amen. Nakapasok siya sa Oxford University and we thank the Lord. We praise the Lord. It's going our way. But when I asked nung bakasyon, kinumusta ko, kumusta yung anak mo? Nakauwi na ba siya? Sabi niya, hindi, nandun pa, may mga inaasikaso. And when I, nung huling tinanong ko siya last time, sabi niya, hindi siya nakapasa doon sa nire-require para makabalik ng second year. But don't worry, magre-retake uli siya ng mga uh, examination. And we pray then. Pag-pray natin, Mike. We pray then. And now this morning, tinanong ko siya kasi expectedly, nagbalikan na yung mga estudyante. Di ba? And tinanong ko siya, musta yung anak mo kung sa'yo ganito? Nasa bahay, sabi niya. Nag-exam uli siya, pero yung resulta ng exam niya ay mas mababa kumpara nung una. So, hindi na siya nakabalik. But the message in there is devoted parents, a devoted son. The question is there is, Lord, why? Bakit hindi mo sinagot yung panalangin ng mga magulang? Hindi mo sinagot yung panalangin ng mga bata? Yun yung normally come into our mind. But the word of the Lord says, Trust in Him. Amen, church. Trust in Him. Amen. Amen. If you are in your deathbed, if you are at the end of your life, would you be thankful that you trusted in the Lord? Would you be thankful na kumapit ka sa Panginoon? Amen, church. If you are in your deathbed, importante ba kung saan ka nag-aral? Importante ba kung magkano ang sinahod mo? Importante ba kung ano ang profession mo? None of those matter. What matters is that you trusted in the Lord. Amen, church. Yun yung sinabi ko kay Mike kanina. Na we anticipate, we trust in the Lord, we anticipate na mas malaking plano ang Panginoon. Amen, Church? All we need to do is magtiwala, magtrust. Ang sabi ko, 
Maganda kung hindi ka nagmamadali. Sakto ang mensahe natin about trusting in the Lord. Uh, you know my heart. Gustong gusto kung ano, mag-stay uh, but kakapagod din yung ginagawa nila rito. From the very early in the morning, they are already here. Trust in the Lord, church. Amen, church? A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Amen, church? Do not put your faith into a person. Mafru-frustrate ka lang. Do not put your faith in a church. Mafru-frustrate ka lang. But put your faith in the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord. Ang tao magkamali, you will be frustrated. But with the Lord, if things are not going your way, you still rejoice because you know that the Lord is in control. Amen, church? He can turn you around. He can turn your situation around. Amen? The Lord is the only one who can sustain us. Especially in times of difficulty. Amen, church? So to end of it, mga kapatid, to end this message today, there are a lot of things in life that will happen, that can happen. There are many things in life that we're gonna go through, that we're gonna experience. And the thing is, as we grow older, dumadami. As a father, as a mother, there are many things in life that will come. That as a wife, as a husband, how would you face? Will happen to your children as a mother, as a father, how will you face? Your parents, how will you face? Your siblings, how will you face it? My dear brothers and sisters, there are many things in life that will happen as a worker, as an employee. There are many things in life that will happen that you will not understand. Amen, church. Two, there are many things in life that will happen that we do not understand why. Anak, Put that in mind. Marami. There are many things in life that will happen that we do not know why it happened, why the Lord allowed it to happen. We do not understand. But it is during this time that when they happen, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a God to lean back onto. Amen, church. Meron tayong sandalan sa Panginoon. You know, if things in life happen, if things in life is happening, hindi natin alam why are they happening. Amen, church? We do not know why they are happening. And the more that we try to figure out, the more that we we drop into that limbo that we do not know what is happening. My dear brothers and sisters, if things happen that we do not know what to happen, we hold on to the things that we do know. What is that, my dear brothers and sisters? What is that thing that we need to hold on to na we know that it is the truth? God loves you. Amen, church? Anyone in here does not know that God loves them? Anyone? Do we all know that God loves us? Then, we hold on to the truth that because God loves you, His thoughts are for your good and for your welfare. Jeremiah 29.11 Amen, church? Amen. May nagmamahal ba na hindi niya gagawin, hindi niya ibibigay kung ano ang nakakabuti, kung ano ang makakabless, kung ano ang maganda sa kanyang minamahal. Nothing, di ba mga kapatid? Sometimes, well not sometimes, Jesus even gave His life 
Because of that love for us. Amen. So if things are happening that we do not know the reason why, let's hold on to that fact that we know that God loves us. And His thoughts is for our best interest. Diba? Sabi nga ni Buds kanina, ano yung sabi ni Buds kanina? Ang Panginoon hindi nagbabago. Amen. The Lord does not change. Kung sino siya nung Old Testament, kung sino siya nung Old uh, New Testament, He is the same God today. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13.8, if I'm not mistaken, that God or the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen, church. Magbago man tayo, ang Panginoon hindi nagbabago. Amen. So, as we end our message on trusting in the Lord, my prayer is, or our prayer ought to be, that Lord, I don't know why. Lord, I don't know why are these things happening. Lord, I don't know why you allow these things to happen. Lord, I don't know why is this, why is that. But Lord, help me and teach me to trust in you. Amen. Help me and teach me to trust in you because you are in control. Amen po, mga kapatid. Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a clap offering? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Can we stand up, church? Hallelujah. Again. Chris was asking me, why is the reason Chris had a fall? And because Chris had a fall, he experienced uh, the prime uh, intervention of uh, the Filipino nurses in the church. Yeah? He has never received uh, a prime nursing intervention, just like the help and uh, intervention that you, my dear sisters, uh, has extended to him. Uh, Thank you for all your help yeah. on that times of need. Hallelujah. In Psalms 113, verses 4 to 6, it says in here, The Lord is high above all the nations, and His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down in the heaven and in the earth? So my dear brothers and sisters, our Lord not only is greater, our Lord is the greatest. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Yes, Father God, we continue to humble ourselves in your presence. We continue to acknowledge our humanity, we continue to acknowledge our luck, we continue to acknowledge our shortcomings, our overgoings, we continue to acknowledge, Father God, those impulses that when things do not go our way, when our prayers are not answered, when things around us, people around us, our loved ones, the situation and their circumstances, Father God, do not fall align with what we hope and expect. Father, there is always that human question of why, Lord? Why, Father, that you allow these things to happen? But Lord, all the more, we thank you for freshly reminding us the need to trust in you. That when we do not know why these things are happening, that we ought to hold on the things that we know. And that is that you love us and your thoughts 
is for our welfare, Father God. Lord, teach us to continue to trust in you, especially during these times of end, Father God. Thank you that prayer about Israel, that all this time, even all the world, Father, are divided. Christians and non-Christians alike, all the world are divided on this chaos and war that is happening in the heart of this world. But Father God, we continue to trust in you. Amen. We continue to trust in you because knowing and believing that Father, your plans is for the greater good. So Father, we entrust everything unto you. Every personal circumstances in situation and every corporate circumstances in situation. For you are in control. For Father God, you are, you like to know what is happening in the smallest and the great details, Father God. So Lord, thank you that you have ministered to us once again, teaching us being trustable in you, Lord, and all and everything that you can do. Thank you so much, Father God, that we can trust in you when things are going our way, when our prayers are answered, but most importantly, we can trust in you when things are not going on our way and when our prayers are not answered. Father God, be merciful and be patient to us, Lord. And Father God, we continue to pray that you help us overcome those hurdles and obstacles in order, Father God, to bring us in your presence on that day, Father God. May the Lord, who began a good works in the life of each and every one of us, will bring it to completion until the day of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and may the grace of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all, church. Let us continue to trust in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we welcome the music team for the victory song? Each and everyone to stand up, and then we will and we will give our most high praise to our God who is not changing, our God who is great, our God who is stronger, our God who is awesome. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Lord.